in an effort to deny the African origins of culture and civilization, Europeans have, have uh, paid the money to send people in to excavate. And the more they dig, the more black they find the people, the culture, and the civilization. When they went to Mesopotamia to try to find a civilization that preceded Kiri, what they found was black folk. So they stopped digging. They're afraid. George Weisner from uh, Boston Museum of Fine Arts was considered to be one of the foremost authorities on civilization in, in Kush. When Weisner was excavating in the Sudan in the early 20th century, he said that there's no way black people, Africans, could have developed this culture and civilization. So he was one of the first Europeans to deny the African origins of what was found in Africa. And then his, his colleague, uh, James Henry Bressler, the founder of the Oriental Institute, in the book he wrote in 1912, I believe, called Ancient Times, Bressler described the people of the Nile Valley as dark-skinned people who are not unlike the Nubians that you will find in Aswan. And then around 1934, 1935, John D. Rockefeller, the founder of the University of Chicago, gave Breasted $1.5 million to establish the Oriental Institute. Thus, what Rockefeller wanted to do was to give Breasted the money so that Breasted could go into the Nile Valley, go into Mesopotamia, and find a European origins of civilization. Today, there stands at the University of Chicago, the Oriental Institute, the first laboratory ever established for the study of the most remarkable process known to us in the universe, the rise of man from savagery to civilization. It was created in 1919 by Dr. James Henry Preston, its first director, with funds originally contributed by John E. Rockefeller, Jr. Subsequently, it has been supported by the International and General Education Board and by the Rockefeller Foundation. So, when Breasted published the revised edition of Ancient Times in 1935, Breasted removed all references to the Egyptians as dark-skinned people and then introduced uh, a whole new language. Uh, he described the Egyptians as dark-skinned Caucasians. He said that that region of the world was a part of the world where the great white race lived. We are dysfunctional beings who don't know what it means to be human. So one of the issues that we're dealing with is that in order to suppress the knowledge of Egypt, Egypt had to be removed from black people and ultimately removed from Africa so that blockages would be placed in our path as we attempted to recover that which others stole and then made illegal in order to prevent us from beginning to uh, regain that knowledge that would empower us and allow us to free ourselves, free our children, and ultimately uh, liberate ourselves from their continued uh, psychological and economic oppression.